Okay, I wanted to make another video for you. Technical analysis. What is technical analysis? So you can make probabilistic forecasts of future price behavior based on price history. You find risk-defined entries and exits that a specular wants to be long or short. Primarily, we're working on being long. Uh, there's not any way to know the future price and behavior based on price history. In other words, technical analysis is a good risk management tool. So let's talk about candlesticks. This is really important, how to read these candlesticks, how to understand them. So candlesticks are charts are a version of a price chart. Uh, you could have line charts. You could have, a, there's, there's a ton of different types of charts. So, uh, but this candle color, you know, you've got your red or bearish candle. Uh, your green is a bullish candle. Your candle body is a solid part of the candle. Uh, your candle wicks, and I'll show you these. So you got your candle body. Uh, this is basically a red candle. This is a green candle. So again, bullish red candle. So this is this wick, this upper wick, is the high of the price. So let's say this time frame right here is on a one hour chart, okay? So this entire candle, wick, and solid body of the candle is one hour, okay? So this will tell you the entire price action for that hour. If it's a daily chart, this candle is one day. If it's a weekly chart, it's one week. And again, it'll show you the price action. So this would be the high, let's say this is a, an hourly chart. So this is the high of the hour, okay, where this wick's at. So then this is where the bullish green candle closes, okay, because it's gonna go up. The open is where it starts. The green candle starts at the bottom and opens. So this tells you where your price opened at. And this tells you to do the low. This wicks right down here will tell you wherever this stops at. will tell you the low of the hour. Bearish candle, basically the same thing. Only thing is it opens and closes opposite, okay? Because bearish candles move down. So they open at the top and then they move down and close lower. So again, your wicks, your wicks, gives you, so if you have this, it's the entire price action over that entire hour period, okay? So this is the OHLC, and I'll show you that in, second, in a second. It's open, high, low, and close. This is easy to see if you are, let me see, there we go. Okay, you'll see it right here. Open, high, low, close o h l c so if you were to zoom in on one of these candles and you hover over it these numbers fill in and it shows you this candle opened at 73.59 the high was 73.97 the low was 66.82 and the close was 6700 so the close was where the candle stops okay uh the open remember bearish candles open at the top so the open uh was 73.59 the high is the high of the wicks 73.97 and then the low is the low of this wicks 66.82 okay so you can just hover over it and then you'll get the high so this entire price action went from 73.97 to 66.82, so it was constantly moving and whatnot through this. this. is the daily chart, so this is a daily candle. So the entire day, this was the price action. Uh, just to go back, so again, it's very useful when mapping out significant price levels. You've got your weekly open, your daily open, your high of the day, low of the day, uh, precise high or low of a given move, whether the price closed through a level or swing point. So these time frames, again, we just talked about that. 15 minute time frame, one candle, uh, means 15 minutes elapsed during that time frame. These higher time frame candles, remember, they encompass. So if you're looking at an hourly chart, they you could break down that candle into four 15 minute candles if you went out, uh, actually zoomed in to a 15 minute time frame. Uh, or if you, you used uh, two 30 minute candles, again, would make up that hourly candle. So candle closes are very significant. A lot of times people are looking at these trades and they don't want to make a trade until they get a candle close. Uh, and so again, uh, you're, you're waiting until these bodies uh, or these candles actually close uh, and moves to the next candle. The beginner should focus on a couple higher time frames. Look at the daily. 
Uh, possibly I look at a 12 hour or six hour, four hour chart. Uh, you don't want to get, and they call it noise. You don't want to get caught up in the noise looking at too much, too low, uh, too short of time frames. You know, five minute charts, 15 minute charts, 30 minute charts. That's like day trading charts. You really want to zoom out and look at daily, weekly. You're looking at the overall trend that way. Candlestick patterns. So there's a ton of different candlestick patterns. I post them all the time. Doji, swing high, swing low, shooting star, hammer, engulfing, tweezers. Uh, the When it comes to the candlestick patterns, again, you don't want to use these solely to make trades on, but you want to have them come into play. So if you have a reversal candle, you want another indicator to work with it, your RSI, uh, your MACD. So you want a couple indicators to work with the candlestick patterns to kind of give you more validity in your trade. Again, use higher time frames. Zoom out. Conclusion. Uh, the key is really <clears throat> patterns can be useful, but only if they appear in the right context. So you constantly, like, <laughs> these patterns are important, but again, there's so many other things that go into it. But over time, the key is, do you guys just get started? Draw some, you know, some cup and handles, some triangles, and everything else will slowly fall into place. It's kind of like riding a bike, you know, you Get on the bike at first. Maybe you got training wheels, and that's okay. You just learn. But as soon as you really start to catch on, you're just off to the races. So again, drawing trend lines. So when I talk about trend lines, uh, for example, this yellow line down here is considered a trend line. Okay. Uh, you always want to trade with the trend. You, you really don't want to buy uh, on a downtrend because if you were, let's say you're buying dips and you thought this was a dip up here, you're buying here, you're buying here, you're buying here, all of a sudden you lost a ton of money. Wait till you get to the bottom. A lot of people are like, I don't want to miss out. You know what? You're not going to miss out. There's a ton of time left uh, in general. You know, th these, these coins are not going to take off in a day. A lot, you know, sure, do they pump like that? But yes, but again, if they pump at 100% a day or 50% in a day, they're going to pull back and you'll be able to buy the pullback. So again, don't feel, don't FOMO. You know, there's plenty of time to make sure you get in on this bear run, which uh, hasn't started yet, obviously. Uh, so let's take a look at drawing trend lines. What are they? Uh, the trend, you have support and resistance, and we'll talk about that in a second. Patterns and channels. Uh, you want to have three touches along a trend line to constitute a valid trend line. Two touches is tentative one. Ideally, these touches should be spread out along the trend line and not be clustered together. Longer lines are more powerful and the price will react more forcefully to breaching them. Usually time frame rules apply. Bigger time frames mean they're more likely to give valid lines. So the higher the time frame, the more valid whatever uh, trend trend line you're showing whatever if you're drawing triangles it just makes it more valid the chance of it playing out is a lot higher uh, so again you want to when you draw them you want to connect a high point to another high point a low point to a low point uh, and then you you try to draw them with the wicks but there's not really a rule like some people draw with the wicks sometimes i'll draw them without the wicks it's just really what gives me the better uh pattern or, or better a triangle you know so sometimes use the wicks if, if it if you feel like candle bodies is better you can do that too support and resistance zones are zones not magic lines these patterns and lines will never be perfect especially in crypto never force a trend line that you feel shouldn't be there but it, it just doesn't fit keep an eye out for trend lines that were broken these these trend lines are super important so again, here you've got a trend line. This is showing an uptrend. And again, you can see one touch, two touch, three touches is what we're looking for. Two touches is tentative, remember. Uh, and again, so you see this is a downtrend. You see it one touch, two touch, three touch, and then it breaks out, okay? Uh, so again, that's next Saturday night. Just had it in the uh, files. Uh, let's see real quick on drawing some support and resistance. Let me let me go over this real quick because this is huge Let me see Okay, so if we were to draw support on this or resistance, okay, you can see uh, Candle candle bodies with with resistance is typically the way I go uh, so and you can go with uh, alt H and it will draw perfect lines for you across so 
You want to look for resistance points in the past that come into play in the present or the near, uh, you know, near past, I guess you'd call it. You know, you want to look at five days ago, seven days ago, a month ago, these points, uh, and then points that where it comes into play now. And what I'm looking at is this. So you like basically looking at this little line here and you want to find, okay, so here's one. You can see it touches here, touches here. And so it probably is going to go back here and touch there. There might be a few other touches. Okay, so there's also a bunch of resistance here. You see how this is coming up and hitting it, how this is coming up and hitting it, this is coming up. Um, so again, we've got a lot of resistance there. Uh, you come down here. Really, there's a whole bunch of resistance. And sometimes I'll go and I'll just draw a rectangle because there's really just a ton of noise. There's just a ton of support in this area. You know, support on the way down, resistance. And you can see we broke it. Even though there's all this support and resistance, support and resistance in this area, we broke through violently and it took a lot to break through. Okay, but it happened. So there's a ton. So you could call this a support zone when the price action's up here. And it would be resistance. When when the price action starts coming up, all of a sudden there's gonna be a it's gonna be hard to break through on the upside. Okay, so when this price is trying to get up here, it might re get rejected. It might bounce off and come back down and come back down. Uh, so let's just look at another chart real quick. Let's look at the four hour chart. And again, this comes into play at the tops of these uh, run ups a lot too. And you can see they just get rejected. So everybody's worried about you know, all this support back here, or resistance technically, uh, if it's on the way up here, see how these candles stop right here? All right, that becomes resistance because they, they hit into it and couldn't pass it. And so you'll go back and you'll see, okay, so this point, it was resistance because it was trying to go up from here and it got knocked back down. Well, you can see here it's resistance, here is resistance. You can go back in time and you can look and there's all this resistance or support. Again, coming down, it becomes support and bounces off of it. So these lines really give you an idea. Okay, so again, you, this comes up here and can't break through, comes up again, can't bang, break through. So it attempted a couple times and then it broke lower. Uh, so it was resistance at this point. And then you can see here is resistance too. So again, you're constantly marking these and you'll see this price action just kind of bounce back and forth, back and forth uh, within this price action. So I was looking at uh, basically an ascending channel possibly that was forming on Bitcoin. So we'll just see if we can draw something. Possibly an ascending channel, really. Okay, so you want parallel lines. And now you have to assume that we've been bouncing back and forth in between this channel. So you have to assume we continue it. So you, you basically, if you're looking to buy, short-term buy, you could buy here. You have to assume we break higher. If, if we break out, if we break lower, then you just have to you know have your stops in place. Uh, if you if we break higher, obviously that's good for you for the bulls. Uh, also over here, you see this is a four hour chart. And you'll see this is the candle. We're at three minutes, or excuse me, three hours, 51 minutes until this candle closes, talking about this specific candle. Okay, so it gives you a countdown. So when people are waiting for this candle to close, that's what they're waiting on this time to run out. So again, just wanted to, I, did, I know it kind of went over a lot, but I, I definitely want you guys to just dive, jump right into the market. I promise you, like once you start going over this, I want to see some people posting charts asking me, hey, what do you think of this? It, I'm just, I promise you the single biggest thing that changed what my portfolio looks like, patience is probably up there, number one. Number two, technical analysis, but patience in this game is really the key. A technical analysis is right behind it, you know? So fundamentals are important, but I'm telling you, technical analysis and patience are more important. You guys, have a great day. I appreciate everyone's support. Take care.